What's up everybody, JJ Shankles, the Goat Toasters here. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Today I'm here to answer the question, do you need to color calibrate your gaming monitor? We've got the Spider X Pro by Data Color. This is their newest version. The older one is the Spider. Their, their older one was the Spider 5. This one has a couple improvements. This one has a couple improvements, the biggest one being the speed of it. This one can color calibrate a monitor in under two minutes, whereas the other one I heard took like 30 minutes to an hour sometimes. Color is really important to me because I am colorblind. I am red, green, colorblind. And so certain shades of red and green look like the exact same color to me. So I use things like, this is the Spider Checker 24. I use at the beginning of videos where I'll take it, hold it up here, and then you can match this in DaVinci Resolve to get your colors a little bit more accurate, but we're not reviewing their color checker today. We're using this. It's something you don't really see mentioned specifically for gaming monitors that color calibration can really be important. Sure, it's a high refresh rate screen, but getting those colors accurate can make a game so much more beautiful if the colors are actually what you're supposed to be seeing. You see it so much more on the photography and videography reddits that people are talking about color calibrating their monitors because it's really important. And for me, since I have a two monitor setup back here, I always kind of thought certain colors look different on the top screen and the bottom screen. So especially for a dual monitor setup, I'm really hoping this can match colors so that things look the same across two different monitors. Quick unboxing because it's such a simple box. You take off the top, a little bit of instructions, plastic part, and then you got the color checker. It's right here with a long USB cable, and this has got a little case that snaps onto the front there. So let's get right into it. So I do want to mention this would be better if I did it in a darker room or not in the morning. In the morning, the sun shines right through this window here, and so it really brightens up the area and really makes it hard to film because this way overexposed side of my face will turn really dark sometimes and then it'll get way overblown. But this is just when it's easiest for me to film videos, so you gotta make do. But I would recommend you do the color calibration in a darker room or just in a darker part of the day. In me, midday, the sun is overhead so it's not directly shining through the window. So that's more accurate to the brightness in the room when I'm actually using the monitor. So this top one I've already color calibrated and if you can, I, I like that color a lot more than this one. This one's a lot darker, maybe some greens in there, but I'm not sure. I've gone through and tried to do the manual color calibration, and after about an hour of work, I looked at it and I thought it was worse than it was initially. So first you open up the monitor's menu, you go down to general. It'll be different for every monitor, but you do wanna go through and do a factory reset. And then go in here, set the brightness, contrast, and on this monitor, I set the sharpness. I set the brightness and contrast around 80 for each of those. Let me know in the comments down below what settings you use for brightness and contrast. I'd love to hear about it. And then sharpness, I take to around an 80. I like this picture of my cat for the background because there's so much detail here. You can easily see when it's over sharpened, there's way just the details look bad on it. Or when it's you take the sharpness all the way down, it's just a blurry picture. And so I wish the monitor wasn't trying to do any sort of extra sharpening to it and just showing the picture as it is. So I think about 80 is what looks normal. When it's at 50, which I wish was kind of an off setting, it actually looks a little more blurry than it should. This is when you would want to turn all your response time. You could leave it at normal or fast. If your monitor has a fast ist setting, sometimes that can leave some ghosting or streaking. But if you have a fast setting, I'll leave this one at fast. And here's where you can turn on FreeSync or G-Sync if your graphics card is compatible with that. And so now we're ready to calibrate. You do have to tilt the monitor up so that this can lay flat on there because it will have to rest on the screen. So sort of like how a laptop can lean back, you have to lean the monitor backwards so you can rest it on there. In here, it does recommend that your monitor has warmed up for about 30 minutes of being on. So this one's been on for about an hour now. A big issue I found is that this USB cable won't work on some faster USB plugs. It only works on simple USB 2.0 plugs. And so your mileage may vary on various faster USB ports, but I used it on a USB 3.2 and I was getting errors. Every time I would click a button, an error would pop up. It was giving me some issue that it didn't know what my monitor settings were. So I do recommend you just keep this with a USB 2.0 if possible. And you can just step through the settings here. You can indicate which controls you have on your monitor, whether you have a Kelvin control and a brightness or just brightness controls on your monitor. It tells you to select what kind of backlight you have on this monitor. And so you can Google what type 
what exactly these, this setting should be for your monitor. I'm gonna do the full calibration on this screen, but down here at the bottom, you can select to change your settings. This is where you can set what white point you want, what brightness you want, what gamma you want. So you can change those if you know what you want. Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave them on the recommended settings. It tells you to set the white point at 6500K, which for this one, I'm gonna set at medium. This next step to measure the brightness in the room tells you to open up the calibrator and set it flat on your desk. It's saying the room is way too bright right now and that it needs to set the brightness at 200. So this next screen, you lay this over the top, make sure it's right in the middle and make sure it is laying flat on the screen. Click next and it'll start the calibration. Make sure you move the mouse away from the middle. It'll cycle through a bunch of colors here and then at one point you will have to set the brightness. This is where it is you're trying to set this point into this green. So that's where you're going for where the white bar is right in the middle of the green. And then you hit continue, and it'll continue on with the calibration. And fast forward through all that, you click the finish, and the color calibration is done. You get to name this monitor. I'm gonna name it my ultra wide. And then you can set a calibration reminder to see if you wanna come back to this to remind you to calibrate every six months. And since it only takes two minutes to calibrate, I do think I might actually do that every six months. So that last calibration, you might have noticed there was a difference between the monitors because I calibrated them at different times of the day. That caused that difference. So now I recalibrated both of them at the same time. And I don't know if you can tell, but they look really similar, especially for being different monitors. They're both by LG, but this one's a high refresh rate, more of a gaming monitor. This is a 4K 60 Hertz refresh rate, more of a high quality, better picture types monitor. And after calibrating, you can tell a little bit of difference. The dynamic range is a little bit better up here, but I can show you the before, it looks like this, and after, it looks like this. Same up here, before. This is what it used to look like, and I thought it looked fine, but then after using the color calibrator, I would recommend after you color calibrate it to use it for a day or so. First time I color calibrated, I thought it looked way too warm and the colors didn't look natural because they were just different. They were different than what I was sort of training my eyes to think were actually true colors. And now that I've been working with it for a day, when I switch back, this just looks way too cool of colors and the brightness is just blown up. The colors aren't accurate. I really appreciate this, especially since I'm colorblind, that I know colors are actually accurate now. What looks good on one screen is gonna look good on the other screen, and it's gonna look the same, which was something I'd always kind of been struggling with, having two separate monitors, things would just look different. Then this last page does give you a score of how your monitor checks out on the full sRGB range. And it shows how this monitor is not as good as this one. This one covers 99% of the sRGB gambit, while this one only covers 94%. So the colors aren't as good, but now they are accurate, even though it doesn't cover that entire range of colors. Now onto the question of does it improve your gaming experience? It won't get you more kills. It doesn't give you more frames per second, but I do think it gives you more accurate colors. And so it depends on what you want out of your game. If you don't really care about the picture quality of the game and you're really just wanting that high refresh rate, if you play some CSGO, Fortnite, and you're just going for a high refresh rate experience, then colors won't really change it. But especially for cinematic games or if you just enjoy the overall visuals of a game. Overwatch is a game I play a lot of and after color calibrating it, the menus look different now. These menu tiles look so much more accurate and I can actually tell the difference between some colors that I weren't, wasn't able to differentiate before. So I think it does come down to what kind of gamer you are and what experience you want out of your games. But if you're going for color accurate gaming and you want to see the full cinematic quality of your game and want to experience every single color in its true and you want to see every color in its true essence that the creators designed it for, I would recommend this. And I was surprised at what it did, for, even for a gaming monitor. Like I said, it doesn't cover the full 99% of the sRGB gambit, but even in that situation, it does give you really good, accurate colors. And it brings a new life to some games that I've played so much before. But that about wraps it up for this review. I put an Amazon affiliate link down below. If you click that, it does support this channel at, it does support this channel at no additional cost to you. And if you have any more questions, questions or comments about this, make sure to put them down in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you would hit that like and subscribe button, it really helps this channel out with the YouTube algorithm. But anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you again in the next episode. Go Toaster out.